Hello everyone! So many people postpone getting an estate plan in place because they are not sure what kind of information an attorney may need from them or because they think it's going to take a long time to get all the information together. Oftentimes they're overthinking. So today we're going to go over our own intake form to give you an idea on what you need to have ready or work on before you come and see an estate planning attorney. It is worth mentioning that each law firm has their own intake form. Some of them may be more complicated or more complex, asking for detailed information, and some of them may not even require you to fill out an intake form before an appointment. The reason we ask people to have their intake form ready or at least worked on as much as they can is because the intake form is designed to help you get organized and to help you write down all the information, all the questions you think of. That way when you come to our appointment, we make the best of our time together. Before we start looking over our intake form, let's talk about what is estate planning. Estate planning provides you with the opportunity to choose now while you're well and healthy what will happen with your minor children and your money if you become unable to make decisions or when you die. What does that mean? If you get into a car accident and you cannot care for your children or you are unable to go to the bank to pay your bills, who would be stepping in? That's what estate planning does. It helps you have in writing and become legal document your designations, your wishes. The documents we use are a last will and testament, and that, of course, comes into play after your death. Power of attorneys are during your lifetime, but you are unable to make decisions. Advanced directives, healthcare power of attorney, HIPAA releases, those are for your healthcare needs. And there are several other options, transfer on death deeds or whatever the situation may require. So very briefly, let's look over our own intake form. It's confidential, of course, and then on your personal information, we need your legal name, your date of birth, your home address, phone numbers, contact information, marital status, if you're a widow, divorced. This is all, this all relates to your estate planning needs. And I like the use of the intake form for this information for your spouse and your information and then we go down to beneficiaries. That way we don't spend a whole lot of time um, on who is who and how do you spell their name and how are they related. You already have all that information here and ideally I even have this form back a few days before you come in. So as you see we have spouses, both clients if married, and then if they have children or other beneficiaries, how they are related to everyone. If they, if their children have children, because that matters as well. Um, if you have any deceased children, if any of your beneficiaries are receiving a Medicaid or, or needs-based governmental benefits, that's important because we want to address that. If you want to disinherit someone, you provide that information. These are some questions that we want to make sure we address because it is so important that we have the proper designations in our documents. Your planning objectives, once again, brings me back to making sure we address all your concerns, not just, um, for example, avoiding probate or uh, planning for incapacity. So it could be you want to protect your grandchildren, you want to provide for a pet, um, you want to protect against liability, and, and so on. An important section here is people who advise you because we all work together to make sure that your estate plan will do what you want it to do and your other assets fall into it, right? So your, your financial accounts if you have a life insurance, um, if you have retirement and 401k, they all work within your estate plan. And if you have someone who can who helps you with that, I wanna make sure that we keep in touch or if needed, we um, communicate to on your, on your behalf. Um, assets assessment and then the rest, a big part of it is what kind of assets you have. And we start with real property. How is it owned? Is it a separate property or is it a, a marital property? Is it an inheritance you receive from somewhere or it is just a home you bought together with your spouse or with another person? 
your cars, boats, RVs, just so we address how they work and how they would be transferred upon your death or used during your incapacity. And then financial information. Please note that I do not want full accounts. I do not need to know amount, amounts up front. The only time we talk about the amount is when we're in person, just to see if we need to account that your estate may be liable for, for estate taxes. Bank accounts, investment accounts, this is a good time for you to sit down and write down all that information. I know it may not be fun, but this is the perfect timing to leave a list for your loved ones, for your spouse, for each other, for your kids, with what you have, where they need to go if something happens to you. Investments account, bonds, stocks. I mean, stocks, for example. How would someone know you own stocks if you don't have a list somewhere, if we don't address them, if we don't make sure that you have beneficiaries listed? Life insurance policies as well. You may have one through work, but you may have bought one from a colleague at work or from, um, from a broker that nobody knows about. So um, this is what we cover, retirement plans, business interests, that's a, that's a big one. A lot of people have LLCs here and there, rentals, we need to make sure that they are included in your estate plan and they do what they're supposed to do and that we avoid probate. Any lawsuits, and then we'll talk about distribution. This is very basic information that I need from you, just enough to get you thinking. We, when we meet, we'll talk about it in detail and we'll go over all the options you have. Oftentimes, I send people home with samples just to, just to get them going. Um, persons to act on your behalf. Of course, we'll have to address if you have minor children, who would you want to serve as guardians? We have initial and alternate. The same thing for your financial power attorney, for your healthcare documents and your trustees and executors of your will. And this is it, we're at the end of it. So what's next? Give us a call at 405-857-8231 to schedule an appointment. We'll send you the intake form as we discussed, and then we'll meet once, twice, three times, however many times we need to, to make sure that your wishes will be followed no matter what in the case of incapacity or upon your death. Thank you for watching.